If you want more FIFA content from me, I'm now uploading exclusive videos to Patreon. The link for that is down below. And if you want to avoid the random lottery that is FIFA points, you can go straight to the source with u7buy.com. And of course, you can use the code TVM at checkout to get yourself a discount. What is going on guys, Tivim here, welcome back to yet another player review. Uh, I think today we're going to do another two league SBC cards and then I'll sort of move away from it because I appreciate that not everyone is going to go out and do league SBC cards just to get the players. But the two in question are two very, very good players. Oparo was released yesterday, of course, MLS sent back, terrible for links, absolutely horrendous. Uh, I don't really know the type of teams you'll be running with this guy. If you picked up Nesta from Icon Swaps and maybe Van der Sar or Schmeichel, then you have like the outline of a team. Uh, Mackay Steven, of course, works as well. He was available as an SBC during the Shapeshifters promo. So there are definitely some ways in which you can link him in. But let's have a look at the in-game stats of Opara because I've seen a few people make videos on him already. And um, they're obviously touting him as the best centre-back in FIFA, question mark. Well, is that really true? An 88-rated centre-back? Come on now. Um, yeah, they, they might be right, actually. Uh, a good pace, 87, uh, sorry, 86 acceleration, 96 sprint speed. Um, only 2-star, two 2-star, two which may put, like, four people off. I don't think skill moves as a centre-back is that really, like, essential, so let's just forget that. The, the weak foot is annoying, but it's not the end of the world. I, I think... Having like a, a, a four or five star weak foot on a centre back is kind of pointless and wasteful. It's like you just don't get the benefit from it. Uh, in terms of the um, the defensive stats, I mean mid 80s to high 80s and heading is low 90s. So I mean that's really good. His physicals are just insane. You don't need good stamina on centre backs. But he has it in 83. He's got insane jumping, insane strength and aggression. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, passing, well, you know, not bad for a centre-back with a two-star weak foot. 99 short passing. That's crazy stuff. His vision is terrible at 70, but just enough to get the ball out of the back should be, a, should be enough there. I mean, 99 short passing. A lot of midfielders don't have that. I know if you don't have the vision, it doesn't feel that great, but still, still a great start. 97 agility, which was definitely something I was concerned about yesterday. When I first looked at the card, I looked at, um, looked at pace and was like, wow, 92, that's crazy. And then defending in physical oh my god it's so good and then oh dear 75 dribbling that isn't great is it uh but then i thought well let's have a look see what his agility is like it's probably something like 70 or whatever no 97 97 agility that means this card is going to feel so much better than what you could ever imagine it would do the the 74 rated card which is obviously the, the base uh, was upgraded by 19 points, 24 in agility alone, but 19 across the board for dribbling, 24 across the board for passing. I don't quite understand why they've gone right. Well, let's give him 99 short passing because oh, that's a heavily boosted stat. Is he known for being an amazing passer? Don't know. Good composure, insanely good reactions. I mean, to be fair, on paper, with the chem style in particular, which is an anchor, he actually turns into a 95 rated centre back. If you if you if you try and if you sit there, you sit there and you try and tell me that that isn't end game stats, then you're lying. You're lying to me. You're lying to yourself. You're lying to everyone who's helped you in life. It, it's um it, it it really is an end game card, especially with that chem style. Now I gave him an anchor. Uh, because I, I felt like uh, there was no need to go with uh, with a short passing boost. Obviously, just to get that vision, pointless for a centre-back. If he was a CDM, then maybe we'd argue it, right? Uh, dribbling, again, I don't really care about the ball control and the actual dribbling aspect. I, I, I will, at the end, put it down as a negative that he has poor ball control. Uh, because Or dribbling, because they're both really, really bad. But for a centre-back, especially if you're going to use him no-nonsense, you just get the ball and get it out. Brilliant. Um, let's talk about the um, the positioning. Uh, talk about the jockey. I mean, I've used a, a lot of good centre backs this year. Ramos, UCL. Uh, got Nesta. Still used him. Gomez is uh, live card, which is now defunct. Of course, to be fair, every dynamic card is now defunct, so that's irrelevant. That Liverpool got knocked out of the tournament. I think they meet today, don't they? The um, the European Commission or whatever it may be to discuss what happens with the Champions League and the Europa League. I really wouldn't be shocked to see them just void the competition which is a bit like I don't know, it's a bit grim on the likes of Atletico and, and At Atalanta for example who have you know their first ever season in the Champions League they've done so so well to get where they've got and 
the, the competition gets voided. It's going to be a bit grim, but we'll have to wait and see what happens there. But with... Um, with regards to Opara, if we could try and pick up on a weakness, honestly, besides the links, and besides the obvious, you know, his ball control, his dribbling are not very good, his weak foot isn't very good, uh, the vision is terrible. Like, those are things that like, I don't care about. Like, they, they're factual, they are bad, but I don't care that they're bad because it doesn't affect how good the card actually is. Does that make sense? I, like I said, I've used a lot of good defenders this year, and the list could have gone on and on and on. With me starting with the likes of Ramos and so on and so forth. But honestly, I'm not just saying it for the sake of clicks or whatever. This is the best centre-back I have used in FIFA 20. He is absolutely incredible. And I don't say that lightly because of the, the, the people that I've used. You know, like Screen PK was a very, very good card. Um, Headliners Varane is a good card. Use them a fair bit. But this guy is on another level. His natural positioning, defensive awareness, is insane. He has the ability to catch up with defenders, despite the fact that he's been beaten all ends up. Like, not, not to say that he's not good enough to be able to cope with it, but what I mean is the ball bypasses him, right? So it gets played around the outside of him. He's He's gone to, to make a challenge, and he's just somewhat out of position or whatever, and he doesn't quite make the tackle. Well, he then sprints back and beats whomever he's racing, gets in front of him, makes a challenge, gets the ball, plays it out. He's got that much pace that he can honestly, he can do that. And he's a natural centre-back. There are plenty of players out there who I see use as centre-backs who aren't natural centre-backs. And then that means, of course, they don't get the full boost of the chem style. They don't have the, the full stats that, that you'd expect them to have because they're playing on seven chem exam, for example. This guy was, in, I don't like to use the word insane, people criticise it all the time, but he really was, he, he is that good. Now, on screen, you're seeing the pros and the cons, and I've already mentioned it. The price tag of this card is definitely a con. Um, I don't mean a con as in like they're scamming us, I mean it's just a, it's just not good, right? So, 236,000 coins on PlayStation, 315 on Xbox, PC are the real winners though, 210k. Uh, I'm on PC, so we are the winners. Well done, lads. Give yourself a pat on the back for playing on the superior platform. Uh, with that being said, uh, the link's obviously the biggest downfall. Like, it's mad that we're talking about the downfall of a card, the biggest one being something that isn't uh, stat-related. So it's nothing to do with his in-game ability at all. It's just the fact that it's not easy to link him into a team. Now, with regards to a centre-back, of course, you're not going to bring him on as a super sub, or chances are you're not. I mean, you could work him into a CDM role if you want to bring him on as a sub, but... As a centre-back, he's brilliant. He needs to be used there, and bringing him on is not ideal. You know, you want him in there from the beginning. He's got the st stamina to last him from the beginning, so why would you not want to start him? So that's going to be the tricky th uh, tricky thing. You don't want to compromise other positions, do you, really? That's, that's the problem. You know, I used him in a team with Nesta. I put a silver goalkeeper behind him. I put... Um, the silver goalkeeper gave him the strong link. I put Andy Robertson at left back that linked in with Makai Steven, who obviously gave Opara a link. So I did end up playing uh, Robertson on 7 chem, and I used a silver goalkeeper. You don't want to do that. So, yeah, the links are definitely tricky. Overall rating, I gave him a 90. Oh, I, I'm saying he's such a good card. Why am I only giving him a 90? Top right, you can see class 1. This is by far the best centre-back I've used. Therefore, he is a class one player. He is up there. He is top dog in terms of centre-backs. And if you don't believe me, I've got a few comparisons here. Um, so you click on comparison on Footbin and they give you three options. Tomori's future stars, they give you Varane's high-end headliner, and they give you the Toulouse centre-back from the Milestones objectives. Now, Varane is an interesting one because on paper... Varane isn't quite as good. Um, he doesn't have the pace, he doesn't have the passing, he doesn't have the physical, he has a slight edge on the defensive stats and doesn't have the dribbling. He doesn't have anywhere near the amount of agility that Opara has, which is so vital in that centre-back role for jockeying. Tomori comes close, but again, just doesn't quite live up to what Opara is. And of course, that uh, Toulouse centre-back doesn't have it either. So, in all honesty, you compare him to those three players who are... Just as expensive, if not a lot more expensive, and Opara holds his own. The only downfall are the links, and that is where the sticking point is. But, in terms of centre-backs, you, you're not going to get better than this for a long time. If 
you agree or disagree, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. If you have enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and until the next time, goodbye. Football Index. The game changed. Download the app now.